Okay, so I just want to do a quick run through on some of the things you might see on the online EOG. Uh, so you're gonna be, you should be logged in before you sit down, and then uh, you'll see a screen like this while the teacher reads through their script. When they tell you to click start, you click start. Uh, you'll go through uh, a few sample questions. Uh, these are a little bit different than a, a paper and pencil. Um, You'll see uh, what I mean in a second. Uh, a couple of things to point out. There is a, if you click something and then you decide, no, wait, I don't want that, you can just click something else. If you don't want anything clicked at all, you can click reset. And it gives you a warning that this is going to reset the question to the original state. And you, if you want to, you can do that. Flagging a question, either by clicking the checkbox or by clicking the word flag. We'll flag it so that at the end, uh, you can see that, oh, that was a question I had a problem with, so I'm going to go back to it. Uh, the little X here, if you, that changes your cursor to an X, and then you could say, oh, we wouldn't use that, and we wouldn't use that, and we would not use that. So uh, then you click that again, and then you can click your answer, and then click Next to go to the next question. Okay? Since this is a sample question, it tells us, then the answer should be B. This is another type of question you, you will probably see. Um, make sure you scroll down in case there are answers below the bottom. Uh, so with this one, you're just matching up. So grasshopper is an insect, eagle is a bird, and trees are plants. I don't see any other questions or choices, so I'm done. And I click Next. And it tells us again what the answer should be, and we go on. With this type of question, again, this is a sample question. And the list of living things below, click on each organism that is an animal. So you look at the list, you click the things that are animals. When you are done, you click Next. It tells you that well and bear should be selected, and you click OK. Now you're done with the sample questions, and you would go on to the test. And a couple other things to point out. There's a highlighter, so you can highlight parts of the question, or you can highlight answer choices. If you highlight too much, if you click the one with the line through it, you can erase part of that. Okay. Uh, if you click the X, that just gets rid of all the highlighting, period. If you click the question mark, that brings up the help bar that tells you what all the buttons do. So if for some reason during the test you forget what a button does, that's how you find out. All right. Oh, and there are different sections to it. So uh, if you need to, you, like a specific question, you can just click on the link to take you to that certain part. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, there was one more I wanted to show you. These are all release questions. You've most likely seen these in class. Um, all right, so let me go back. This one, you notice, at least on my screen, here's the question. These are the answer choices. But if I scroll down, there's another answer choice. So uh, any question like this that's not a standard multiple choice, I would make sure I scroll down and try to make sure that there's no extra things. Um, just real quick, you would look at it. This is talking about wind turbines, so it must be wind power. And then we need something that's an advantage of wind power. Well, there's no greenhouse gases produced from wind power. And then here it says cold water is heated using rocks within the earth. Well, we're talking about earth and heat, so that must be geothermal. And then either nuclear is a disadvantage of theothermal or very few suitable sites. And, of course, that would be the answer. You have to be where there's a, a magma relatively near the surface or a hot spot. All right, so then you would just click Next when you're done. And you would go through. Whoops. All right, I accidentally paused it. This would be like if you were going to the bathroom or something. And then you would come back and click Continue. Hit back. Uh, so here's another question. Uh, again, you're dragging and dropping. This case, 
you've got three blanks, three words, you've got to put them in order. Uh, so the this is about the law of superposition. The oldest thing is on the bottom, the youngest thing is on top. All right, so the oldest thing would be the shells. What would be next? You got it. The ferns would be next. And the horse head skeleton would be the youngest. Now, you might not know that that's a horse head skeleton, but it's the only thing that looks like any part of a skeleton. These may not look like ferns to you, but they're the only plants, and ferns are plants, and these are obviously shells. Um, so work through it. And I think everything else is pretty much just multiple choice. Oops. And so here's another one from the released where you need to read through it. They give you an element X that you have to try to identify uh, based on its properties and the periodic table. Do not forget to use the periodic table. Um, Chemistry is a part of this, and you need to use it. So, all right, here's another example of a question that's a little bit different than what you're used to. Uh, identify or click the non-renewable energy resources. So you've got to go through and click what's not renewable. Okay, coal's not. Uh, nuclear power's not. Uh, solar is natural gas and you might think you're done but look if we scroll there's another option there now in this case wind is renewable so we would not click that but on the actual test maybe that's one you need so anytime you get anything that it's uh, if you see a scroll bar let's see here if you see a scroll bar over here then you're you're gonna need to scroll and honestly I would try to scroll no matter what better safe than sorry all right. and all right when you get to the end uh, you can go back if you click uh, for example item number one that's going to take you back to item number one and at any time you can click review Okay, so these are questions I've answered with the little star. This question mark means that I flagged number one. So that's telling me uh, that I thought I would need to go back to that question. And you can go back to any question and uh, that you need to just by clicking on the number. If there's nothing in the answered box, that means you did not answer it. An unanswered question is a wrong answer. You're better off guessing than not answering at all. At least 25% chance is better than a 0% chance. There are 60 questions on the EOG that count. There will be 15 uh, field test questions. These are questions that they are testing for next year or the year after that to see if they're valid questions. Uh, there's actually a lot of statistics that goes into that. So you're going to have 75 questions on the actual science EOG. Uh, just make sure that you uh, take your time, think about each question equally, because you will not know if it is a field test question or a uh, question that counts, what they call an operational question. All right, I hope this helps. Uh, your EOG is coming up, so study, review, uh, the night before your EOG or final exam, make sure you get a good night's sleep, don't stay up all night fiddling with your phone, um, eat a, a good breakfast, and uh, we'll see you in the morning, we'll all do well.